good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good morning, everybody. My name is Quinton Boyson. I'm from PMSA, Pan Mixes South Africa. We are the uh, leading and largest producer of concrete equipment on the African continent, and we export worldwide a full range of concrete equipment. So my discussion today is uh, like a part of a case study uh, showing why a return on investment is better with built to last equipment. That's equipment that is built to last for decades rather than going a cheaper route, which could save you up front, but ultimately cost you more in the long run because you earn less income on your machinery, as well as not able to get the support and the service that you need over many years of operating a machine. In our industry, people are producing equipment with machineries for sometimes 20, 30 years. So it's vital that the right machine is purchased from the start to ensure that you get the best return on investment. I'm online now with my presentation, but uh, unfortunately I can't see if anyone can see it. How would I get feedback if we can see it, Quentin. Oh, excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ndiwe. So, as I've said, uh, my presentation will just quickly cover the history of PMSA, life cycle cost of equipment, a brief productivity analysis, and then just a, a range of equipment that we supply. So, South Africa, we were established in 1976, and we have 280 dedicated staff to the concrete equipment sector. Uh, we are focused on supplying only quality concrete equipment. We don't produce anything that we believe uh, is made cheaply that won't last. We are solution providers, so we study this equipment together with the clients, what's best fitted for their company, and we're the leading technology partner, which gives you as a customer a competitive edge. Our equipment is built to, built to last, and we, I said yeah, tough times call for tough, tough equipment, and that's that's critical because you, you want to have equipment that's going to last you for years, especially in these difficult times. You don't spend your, your money and the equipment just doesn't last. That's uh, unsensical. So we believe in higher productivity, better uptime so that your machine produces more every single day, that you keep on, you get your full nine hours of production. You're not spending your day trying to get keep machinery going. You spend your day producing products. Uh, very important for us is making our customers partners and that they are the most successful in their field. The life cycle cost. So we all start out with the initial cost, what the machine costs. It then moves on to the service cost that's supporting the machinery. Preventative maintenance. We use this word preventative rather than just maintenance because it's not just uh, doing general maintenance. It's preventing future costs by doing maintenance at the right time. Then the operation costs, all your input costs, and ultimately, at the end where you're expanding your business, the disposal cost of the machine. We'll move straight on to the initial cost. So the initial cost is this part that you see here right at the top. So it's what we all see. We go and buy a piece of equipment, but the hidden stuff is underneath. What it will cost to operate, what the service cost will be, what the technical costs will, what will the maintenance costs be? What are the support, the spare parts, and all those things? And that's where we talk about built-to-last equipment. Equipment that this stuff is not hidden from you. This stuff here doesn't become a surprise. It's from the start, you kind of know what it's going to cost you and how much money you're going to make. So when you purchase a machine, whether it's our machinery or it's any machinery in the concrete equipment sector, make sure you do your, your, you do your, your homework right, that you know what's going to happen, what the cost will be for equipment, tools, spare parts, support, so you can do an accurate financial prediction to know exactly what you're going to produce on that machine and what income that machine is going to generate for you. We then move on to the service costs. Heavy machinery or equipment, in our case, is probably the most expensive equipment that any company owns. So you could have a factory that owns a building worth, let's say, 5 million rand, a piece of land that's 5 million rand. But you could easily have your equipment that could be costing 15 or 20 million rand. It's the most costliest part of your, your, your business to replace and repair. 
It's not like a PC in an office that may cost you 30,000 rands to replace. To replace machinery can cost several million rands on your very large plots. Therefore, service, and what I mean by service is a service culture within your business. It needs to become part of your business philosophy. It doesn't matter what machinery you use, whether you buy cheaper machinery or you buy built to last machinery. You must always make sure that it's part of your culture of your business and that the company is supported by a supplier that also has it as part of their culture of their business. And they understand that downtime is money to a customer. Every day on our largest machinery, we produce over 700,000 bricks a day. So one machine going down for one day could mean the loss of a million rand turnover per day if you're producing a simple product like a brick. The next section, which I spoke a little bit earlier about, was preventative maintenance cost. Now, preventative is critical. It's not only doing your day-to-day -day maintenance, a bit of greasing here and there. It's about ensuring that you do the right maintenance. Preventative maintenance is also taking future into account. So it's not just daily, it's looking at the future. And by doing it correctly, research has shown that you can save up to 25%. You have improved equipment and system reliability. The machinery will run every day because you're doing preventative maintenance. Reduction in unexpected breakdowns because you already know what the machine is going to do tomorrow because you've already planned for these aspects. You know that bearings are getting close to the end of their life. You're changing them before they fail. Decreasing expensive part replacements. So, for example, changing your oil and changing your bearings can save a machine from not damaging the bushing inside of it, for example. Ex extended equipment life. That's critical. The better you maintain your equipment, the longer your equipment will last. We have clients with running machinery up to 40 years. The same machine they bought in the 1970s, they're running them today, producing profit every day. And ultimately, the better you look after that machine, the better your improvement on resale. So preventative maintenance is more than regular maintenance, like lubricating, changing filters. A proper maintenance program is all-inclusive. It's an additional approach to equipment management from the time equipment is purchased right until the end of its useful life. The next section is operating costs. Now, in concrete equipment, the operating costs are quite basic, in fact. It's the machine recovery, so it's the write-off of the machine. It's the maintenance cost and repairs, which is, if done correctly, it's extremely, uh, it's extremely, uh, it's, you, you know exactly what you're going to spend on it. You need sand or aggregates. Sometimes there might be two or three aggregates to produce a quality product. You need cement. Cement is a large cost in any concrete equipment manufacturing plant. And then you need your direct labor. Your direct labor would be the labor that goes into making the product. And then we would look at the overheads, which could be your rent. It could be other indirect costs. So the office costs, management of the plant, engineering, etc., And then ultimately waste. The poorer quality your machine is, the higher your wastage. And it will be there for the life of the machine, not just a once-off expense. You will always be losing two, three, or 4% every single day you produce if you have the wrong machinery from the start. Here's a quick rundown. By investing in the right machinery right up front, a typical plant, one of our VB4X, or a machine that produces around 120,000 bricks per nine hour shift, will consume approximately five or six tons of cement, uh, sorry, 6,000 tons of cement per annum. If you're making hollow blocks, somewhere around 5,700 tons. And if you're making paving, 60 millimeter, around 4,000, 3,800 tons per year. So taking an average of this, we come to around 5,000 tons of cement per year. Now, it goes without saying, if you can save 5 or 10% of that by having better quality equipment, more efficient equipment, you can save a fortune. So I just did a quick look here. By having cheaper boards uh, you have versus an FTC board, for example, we supply a solid fiber, fiber thermoplastic board they have a life of about six years, although some clients get up to eight years. We put in the extra cost, what it would be for a better board. We look at a curing system, the extra cost that it would cost to have a proper curing system, a heating system. The more you heat your products in the beginning with a proper curing system, the less cement you need, a moisture control system, a vibration system. And these are our figures. We find some clients have saved as much as 10% cement 
per year with a good quality board, some of them even higher. Some of our clients uh, in the Western Cape saved over 20% cement, changing from a cheap board to a high quality board. Curing can save you between five and 10% of your cement cost per year. And when you add these all up, your savings come, they become considerable. Looking at these savings per annum, so spending around uh, 6 million on, the, on this section here, you could save over 2 million rand. Now this equipment has a very long life between six years and 20 years, depending which part it is. So just taking a nine year cycle, you could be saving up to 18 million rand by investing 2 million rand. There's about a 500% uh, saving on your, a 500% return on investment on quality boards, 600% on the moisture control system, and the other products between 100 and 200% return on investment on your moisture, and on your curing and your vibration system. Oxide is another cost if you're making paving with a color in it. If you only color the top of the paper, you're saving the 50 or 60 millimeters underneath the paper. And that is a considerable saving. We've done it. It's probably one of the, one of the most incredible savings you can get in a, in, a, in a concrete production plant. It can last you 20 years, a good topping feed system. It costs you around 2 million rand on our big machinery or in other equipment as well, not only from our company. Uh, and you look at a saving of, of around 2 million rand a year. So over your nine year, if you look at your plant over nine years, you could save 19 million rand for equipment that cost you 2 million rand. Again, by investing right up front with the right equipment. Taking all of these into account, but only taking 25% of the oxide, you, you can easily save around 20 million rand over a nine year period, which gives you a 260% return on investment of around 8 million. So it's critical to plan your plant up front to have the right equipment right from the start to ensure you get a really good return on investment. Next section, disposal of acid. At the end of its useful life, or when you're expanding your plant, use dispose of the equipment. Now, poor quality equipment will be scrapped and you probably get about five or 10% of the value you paid for it in steel scrap value. Sometimes you don't even get it because you have to cut it up and you have to dispose of it. So you may not even make any money on the disposal. We did an exercise recently, recently for one of our very large producers in the Eastern Cape. In 2012, they purchased one of our VB4X machines the cost of the equipment alone was 3.8 million rand. At today's value for that equipment alone, so it excludes installation, land, all those other costs, it's approximately 88 million rand for that equipment. But yet this client, after nine years, because he bought built to last equipment, he's able to sell that same equipment he paid 3.8 million rand. Nine years later, he's able to sell it for 4.8 million rand. Now that's an incredible return again. You've operated your machinery for nine years. You've made all the savings on the cement and other savings on your, uh, on your plant because you've got an efficient machine. And after nine years, they're able to dispose of the asset, expand their business with a new machine and earn an income. I mean, earn a profit on what they paid nine years before. And that again is through built to last equipment. Here's a quick indication of, is it better to buy big or small machinery? So I've done an analysis of a small machine that does about 60,000 bricks a day, a VB1, a VB4, 100,000 bricks a day, a, or oh, about 90,000 over here, you can see the production per shift, 50,000. Uh, the reason why it's 50, the machine can do 60,000. We always work on a 85% efficiency so that clients will always do better than what we state our equipment to be. So we believe easily over the life of a machine, you'll get 85%. Some of our clients get 90, even 100. Some of them exceed, they go over what we, we, we uh, put on the nameplate as a production figure. So looking at across your 120 for a VP4X, 160,000 for RE 1400, and our very large machine, a, a Ultra 3000 can do 300,000 bricks. So, what would happen is with the same inputs, so the same cost for cement, we've got on all of these here, we've used the same cost of sand, 150 tons, 150 rand per ton, the same cost for cement, 1,500 rand per ton. But bigger machines can use less cement. And when you've added in all the things I spoke of earlier, moisture control, 
and other aspects, you can reduce your, your cement percentage per brick. So what you find is using the same inputs, same cost for labor, obviously you may use more or less in different plants, same efficiencies, same wastage, you can produce a brick on a smaller machine that will be 102 cents per brick versus on a larger machine reducing 92, 80 down to 78 cents just by having the economies of scale and having more superior technological equipment on your plant. So that's something also to look at. Bigger in this case is better. Your profit will increase from anything from 100 to 500,000 on the smaller machines to 4 million per annum on the bigger machines because of your economies of scale and your cement savings. Now, something even more interesting is having a look at a cheaper purchased machine, let's say from the East. So you buy a machine and you know that it's cost you a lot less. It won't last as long, but you're saving a lot of money. So what we have found is we did an analysis, keeping all the inputs the same. A cheaper machine, your brick will cost you probably around 111 cents per brick, or one rand 11. And your built to last machine, and I haven't gone on the top of range, I've gone in the middle. You're probably looking at about 84 cents. And what you find is, I'm going to quickly go through the, the graph here. Sand is gray, cement is yellow. You want to try and increase your, your sand cost is better to increase because sand is cheaper per ton and reduce your cement as a percentage of a product. So what we look at is on the cheaper machinery, you need more cement. It doesn't compact the brick as well. You don't have the proper curing systems. So you end up paying more for your cement as a percentage of your brick. I'll quickly show you an example on a spreadsheet, that same example. So here you'll see the graph, how it changes. If your machine is 85% efficient, the same as what we have put on ours over the life of the machine, you'll find the graph changes. The wedges slightly reduce, other products, it's, your costs change slightly, but you're still not producing a brick as cheap as you could. So the cheap machinery will probably come in around one range of brick, but a built to last machine with all the top of range equipment, 84 cents a brick. That means you're just making much more money per annum. Yeah, you can see the difference on the bottom line. On the cheaper machinery, probably a quarter of a million rand profit per month if you achieve 85% efficiency. Whereas on another machine that we would offer on a similar capacity, 700,000 per month. So, so what I'm saying is you may pay less upfront on a cheaper machine, 11 million versus say 20 million on a big plot, but you're not gonna achieve the productivity. We're finding that some clients with cheaper machinery are as low as 60%. Now, when you change here, you can see I'm changing this figure to 60%. Watch what happens to your bottom line, your profit per month. Suddenly you're hitting break even. We've heard of machinery that they run for two days and then they down waiting for spare parts. So if you're buying machinery from overseas and you, you need your spare parts to come in and it's taking weeks for those parts to come here, you can end up in a situation where your machinery can be down for two or three days. Sometimes it can be down for weeks and you can't produce. You're waiting for parts. Right now with coronavirus, we all know it's difficult for people to travel. Can you imagine trying to bring people overseas from China or from uh, anywhere else and they can't get a visa, they can't enter the country, they're locked down for a month. You can't service your machine, you can't support the machine. This number may drop to 50%. Suddenly on 50%, you're making a loss. You're putting money into your business to keep that machine running rather than the machine producing for you. So our findings have been that uh, another point is the machine, the, the cheaper machinery does not last. Our machinery can last you 15 years, 20 years. We've got clients running up to 40 years with the same machine they purchased in the 1980s. Whereas we find with the cheaper import machinery that's cheaper upfront and keeping in mind the iceberg example I gave you earlier, the iceberg is, it shows you it's cheaper, but in fact, there's so many hidden costs because your machine costs you more to maintain, the machine is not reliable, all of those aspects, the machine ends up lasting five years. So now you, you dispose of the machine, you repurchase the machine. So suddenly paying 11 million rand for a plant and you're disposing of it in five or six or eight years, you're not really saving. You actually, it's hit your bottom line in production because it's not efficient, it's not reliable, it doesn't have top of range technology, and you're also having to replace. 
So again, an example of what we found is you definitely don't save in the long run with going with cheaper machinery. It's something to consider. Look at something that's built to last that you're going to put your money in and it's going to give you a good return on investment. So back to the presentation now. Uh, I've also looked at ultimately. So what, what we say is Benjamin Franklin had a nice saying. The bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. When you have to spend most of your day trying to maintain a machine, keep it running, keep it, keeping that machine like a life support, suddenly your, your business is not the business of making concrete products. Your business is keeping cheap machinery running so that you try to get a return on investment. So that is long, that is quickly forgotten, the savings that you thought you would get. Here's a quick overrun of some of the machines we supply. So we supply a range of medium block making machinery, uh, top class uh, pan mixes. We supply ready mix plants. And it's the same thing. Our ready mix plants last for years. Our concrete drums last for several years. So again, you get a good return on investment, something that you, you pay and it's built to last. It's going to last you for years. We do concrete pumping. We do polished concrete machinery. We do self-loading concrete mixes for on-site production. We do roof tiles from 1,000 to 60,000 concrete roof tiles per day. We do concrete pipe making machinery and curbstone machinery. So why buy South African equipment? Not only from us, but any really well-built South African machine. Number one, it's not always possible. Well, sometimes they have to import machinery from Germany or Europe, but where it's possible, look for local machinery that is well built we build the skills within the country so when machinery goes down you know that companies locally are able to support you more readily than, than foreign companies equipment is fit for purpose we understand the local conditions so local understanding of equipment is vital you don't want to bring in a machine that needs incredible tech uh, engineering skills to operate the machine on the other end, it's just not suited for our country, the conditions, the, the, we have lower skills base here. Maybe the people don't maintain the machine properly. You want a machine that's designed for the, the environment it's working. Economic growth, less reliance on imports for our country. And also you as an import, the, the exchange rate moves radically. It's moved between 14 and 19 rand per dollar in a year and a half. So you can't plan properly. Whereas the rand price, you kind of know that it's going to move around maybe 8% inflation, 6% per year. It's more controllable in your, in your forecasting for the future. But ultimately, the one that I believe is the most important is coupled with good, well-built machinery is better support and equipment when locally produced and supported. When you need support, for example, in our company, if you need support, you get it the same day. We can fly somebody to anywhere in South Africa. We can be in Cape Town in a couple of eight hours. We can do online support here. There's no language barriers. You support it locally. By, we got branches in Durban and Cape Town. You, you're ready to run at all times. If you need a spare part, we get it on a plane. We fly it down to you. You got it the next, you got it the same day or the next day. We can put it on a truck, get it to you by the same night. You're not losing out on production because you have to wait for parts to come many months from overseas or weeks from overseas. We have a philosophy in our business built to last, and it's, it encompasses the technology of our company, fit for purpose technology, matching client requirements, best in class performance. That's critical. When you put up machinery, you want to make sure you're putting up machinery that is the best in class. What is the use of entering a sector when you put machinery that you're competing against other clients that are running best in class machinery, but you can't produce against them? You can't produce and produce your products cheaper or at least at the same price as them because you put it inferior technology, old, 20 year old technology. So in our company, technology is critical. We're always working on the leading and latest technology. Productivity, that's the ultimate goal after putting in the best technology and a machine that is built to last. With a built to last machine, as I displayed earlier in the case study, client bought the machinery for 3.8 million, sold it for, selling it for 4.8 million, a decade and a half later, or a decade later, but the machine will still continue to run for several decades. Our machinery is built to last. So you get an ever decreasing cost of capital because your machine, your product, 
or your cost per in per output per brick per block gets less and less over the years to come because your machinery is not only written off accounting wise you don't have to replace it the profit you generate in your business goes back into expanding your business it doesn't go back into adding uh, replacing a broken machine it goes into adding a second line it goes into adding new technology on your machine or sell the machine and put in a larger machine and ultimately, all of these together gives you productivity that is higher. So I said to you, we always tell our clients, focus on 85% for productivity based on an average yearly figure. But many of our clients exceed that. Some of them hit over 100% productivity. They manage to tweak the machine that it runs even, even more efficiently than what we would put down on paper. And we're happy to hear that when it happens. And that is because our spare part availability is instantaneous. If you need a spare part, 45 minutes will have a part waiting for you. And that's critical when you choose a supplier. How quick can they have a part waiting for you? Do they keep spare parts? In our company, we keep 20 to 30 million rand because we have so many customers running. We keep parts, your maintenance parts, your backup parts, your service parts. That when you need them, they're available almost immediately. Our goal is around 30 to 45 minutes. Place an order, get your part. Come in, process it. If you have an account with us, you should be able to pick up your part under an hour get your machine back up and running as quick as possible low downtime due to robustness of machine don't spend your time trying to fix machinery all day long spend your time optimizing your business and producing more products all the time maximum uptime of machinery as i've been through and ultimately making production planning easier the better your machine is maintained serviced supported by the supplier and the more robust the machine is and if your machine is built to last you are able to produce and plan your forecasting so much easier because you're not thinking, will this machine break down? Will it be unreliable? Will I get the support? Those are side thoughts. You know that you're getting it. You know your machine can do the production that it has to. What you know is the machine will produce day in and day out. And you focus on your business, do what you do best and allow your supplier. And in our case, PMSA, we focus on your machinery to make sure your machine is always running. I'd like to end off in a nice statement here by John Ruskin, quality is never an accident. It is always the result of intelligent effort. Our company goes to tremendous effort to keep producing machinery that is better so that our customers are the best in their sector. Our customers are more successful in their sector. And all of that is through our built to last philosophy, having machinery that will last for decades having machinery that will keep on running. So I thank you for your time. I, this is a huge topic and it doesn't only extend to concrete equipment, it's in any production equipment, that you choose equipment that's built to last, that leaves you focusing on production and the machine does its job day in and day out. Again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we have a few minutes for, for any questions and uh, you're welcome to shoot your questions my way. I don't see any uh, any questions on the system here. So, I oh yeah, once you have started the project with poor products, is there a way you can help? Okay, so yes, let's say somebody is running a machine that they need to optimize. We most definitely can assist you. So if you have a if you have a well built machine, we 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 will be able to come in optimize your production process, add in our moisture control systems, add in our curing solutions, add in our oxide dosing systems, add in all of our other methods. We look at your process, perhaps a better vibration system, and that will help reduce your cement consumption. It will help increase productivity. It will help in producing a better product, a better end product. But things we, we can't change, it's like, if your machine is completely poor quality and it's cracking and breaking up every day, we may have to look at what we could salvage in the operation and simply add in new equipment. So if you have a good market, it's always worthwhile to keep adding machinery, uh, keep adding good quality equipment because there's a demand for products. So yes, we can definitely assist and we're always willing to come out, have a look at your 
your company, look at your machinery and see where we can assist to optimize your processes as well as increase your productivity and ultimately make more money, your company make more money. A second question is, can, you, can we service machinery equipment outside of South Africa? Do you service in Nigeria and the rest of Africa? Yes, most definitely. We have machinery in, in Europe. We have machinery in the Central Americas. We have machinery in Canada. We have machinery in Tonga. It's a beautiful example. Tonga is 11 hours ahead of us. So while we're going into our day now, they're fast asleep right now. And Tonga is an example where clients started with one of our uni hydraulics. And today they're running, that's a machine of about a half a million. Today they're running a VB1X and producing the highest quality products on the island. It reduced the imports from New Zealand, which had to come by ship to the island. And they, they always say, we've allowed them to produce world-class products in an area that is extremely remote. So we support clients in Tonga, we support clients in Australia, throughout Africa, Zambia, Mozambique. Uh, we've got clients in Nigeria, we've got clients in the Cameroon, Angola, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, pretty much all over the world, we're able to support any client. So although we're based in South Africa and our focus is really on you as the customer here in Africa, in South Africa, we support worldwide. And our equipment, a bit plus is that it's designed uh, it's designed to suit every environment. So we have extremely high level technology and at the same time we have equipment that is very basic technology but always built to last. We never compromise on that. We change the technology to suit your requirements. Another question has come up. Uh, please email us a brochure of your machinery you supply, uh, Elias. Uh, Elias, you're welcome to go onto the portal on African Construction Expo. And uh, you, if you go on there, you'll see straight away our brochures have already been loaded on there. Have a look at what's on there. But you're welcome afterwards to send us uh, an email uh, to sales at panmixers, P-A-N-M-I-X-E-R-S dot C-O dot Z-A. Or you could just visit our website pmsa.com and we'll gladly send you a, a brochure showing you all of our products. Any other questions? Uh, any, uh, any other advice? What I would like to say is um, buying machinery on the level that you would be buying for concrete equipment is like a marriage. Uh, when you get married, you don't think about uh, in five years time, I will divorce and uh, I'll find a better, a better spouse or whatever it may be. When you get married, you know it's for life. And choosing an equipment provider should be the same thing. You should, you should study it carefully. Does it fit your requirements? Is there good support? Is there service? Will it keep on running for decades? And that will help you have a business that is built to last. So our philosophy in our company is built to last, but it's not just our equipment. We've got three aspects. The first aspect is the machine must last for decades. You mustn't be spending your profit replacing the machine. You must spend your profits on expanding your business or extracting the profit as a business owner, a dividend, not replacing machinery every three years. The second level of built to last is our company is 45 years old this year, 1976 to 2021. We've expanded in the last seven, eight years. We've expanded during COVID. We're producing one of the largest brick and block making machines, even during tough times. We are not going anywhere. We are built to last company. The third aspect is built to last relationships with our customers. We don't look at a one-off sale. We look at being in a marriage with you, a partnership that lasts decades so that when your children take over your business, we're still dealing with them as a customer. When your children's children take over, third generation. So in Tonga, they're on the second generation, 15 years. The father hands to the sons. The sons are now training their children. We have clients in Namibia, second and third generation. We have a client in Benoni, 40 and machinery running since 1982. You, you span decades and your machinery outlasts the, the generations in a sense. The grandfather hands over to the sons, the sons or the daughters, and the daughters hand over to their daughters or sons. So that's critical. What we'd say is three aspects, built to last machinery, 
choose a company that's built to last and make sure that your relationship with that company is built to last, that it's going to be running for many years. Any other questions? I'm still available for a few minutes. Uh, thank you so much. So we appreciate, and sorry it was uh, a lot of information in a short period of time, but if anyone would like a more detailed analysis and we can go into the figures uh, showing you all of that, I'm always welcome. You're welcome to contact me anytime. You're welcome to visit us. We're welcome to do something online, spend a bit more time and go through what it is about being built to last. So I thank you all for your time. I hope that uh, you'll stay safe, keep well, and enjoy the rest of the Totally Concrete, uh, the show. Online is what we have right now, but we all look forward to seeing you all face-to-face -face again soon at some time. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you.